sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows-based PC. Jim, do you see the same thing in live action? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, certainly the, uh, the as the cameras get smarter, better, lighter, the uh, and and the. By smarter, I mean that the way they network together, the, the whole the whole production chain from the camera back through to to the uh, to the record and it's the dailies process and all that is all getting getting better. It's a it's a smoother pipeline. It's much more transparent to the to the DPs, to the operators, to the directors, and so on. So you know this this idea that you're going to have to add days to the schedule to shoot 3D is just not is not true. So you're not adding days to the schedule. Where you're still getting hit is in visual effects, which is the same sort of thing that, that affects Jeffrey, which is additional render time and so on. But again, as the tools improve, those those costs come down. The other thing that, that you know initially people were having to budget higher for 3D because they didn't know what they were doing. You know, I mean, the producers didn't know, production managers didn't know, crews didn't know, so they were budgeting for mistakes. Well, you can start taking that out of the budget as people have are building. They're building muscle. They're doing this enough. That the crews know what to do, the post-production, all the people in the post-production chain know what to do, the producers know what to do. And so within the next few years, those costs will come down to a fraction of what they are right now. Conversion costs aren't going to come down. Costs of, of native authoring in 3D are, are going to continue to come down. And by the way, you, you, even, even if those costs were equal, you still got to, you got to remember that, that it's not an equal end result. The end result of conversion is not equal to the end result of, of native 3D production. Uh, you're getting, you know, in one case you're paying $10 million for 2.5D, in the other case you're paying ten, an additional $10 million for 3D. The point is that, that you're going to make more money with a 3D movie, and as long as you're spending less to get the incremental uh, increase in your, in your gross revenues, um, then you're fine. Then it's a good business model. It's good to do it, and it's good to do it right. Yeah, I will say, like with conversion, uh, the biggest problem has been sort of finding organizations, helping organizations to come and pull together with a lot of creative talent to actually do conversions. And uh, uh, we're working with Prime Focus, and ILM is working very closely with them. We've, ILM has helped practically every visual effects studio in the world to improve creative things, and so we. You know, can do better work, and uh, we love working with somebody like Prime Focus because they're in the process, they're in it, and they're going through the process, and they're going through making mistakes, and they're going through the learning process. And I was saying today, it's a, unfortunately in the movie business, the learning process is in an arena. You know, you learn, you put it out in the arena, and you know, if you lose the fight, you get booed off the thing, and you have to go back the next day and fight again. But you do get better over time, and so it's in our interest and everything to help promote the technology, the talent, and again, it's the same thing with special effects, to get enough people out there, just trained people who know how to do this, that it makes it easier for everybody to do it, and not only do it in terms of conversion, but just to understand the language of 3D, because it is a different language. Dialect. It's the, it's the next level, it's sort of your graduate work, and you can know this stuff, but then the next thing you have to learn is how to do it in 3D. And the more people we can train, like we're doing in Prime Focus, the more those guys can go up, whether they're doing live action, whether they're doing more conversion, they understand what the issues are, because the issues in terms of depth is a whole different world. And it's different creatively. Because, believe me, I have seen this conversion, and, and I have become very well aware of how much control the person who's doing the 3D has over what the image looks like, how the story is being told, and the movie's already done. They can't do anything but change the depth. But they do a huge, uh, add a huge contribution to the film simply by changing where your focus goes, you know, in terms of the, the depth of the, the image. So one, one thing I think which uh, I, I know we all, actually all four of us up here, uh, need to say to all of you, which is uh, in 2005 when uh, you guys and Bob Zemeckis stood up here, uh, there weren't a hundred movie theaters uh, in the world. And uh, in uh, 2007, uh, there were uh, 770 3D screens worldwide. By the end of this year, there will be 35,000. 
And so we actually, all of us, owe all of you uh, a great thanks for your support and your belief because we started making it with the hope that you would get there. Um, to take a little cajoling once in a while along the way, but you did. And uh, so for, for us and for filmmakers and for Hollywood, you know, all we can do is say, you know, thank you, thank you for the amazing job you guys have done in frankly believing in, in us and the future of 3D. So thank you all. A round of applause for yourselves. So in that regard, because we have this new digital platform, in many cases it's 3D enabled, there's been a lot of discussion about alternative content and the ability to program theaters now, not just for motion pictures, but as an opportunity to program them much like you would program a TV station. Is there anything that interests you in that regard? Is there anything that you're focused on in terms of, from an experimentation standpoint, what you think might be interesting in the future in terms of how, how you program theaters? I think as, I think as uh, you know, travel gets more expensive and to, to a lot of countries more dangerous. And as we become more of a global village, I think that theaters could easily be kind of the 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 the, uh, the village gathering place, if you will, for that for that global village where we can participate in events and things that we couldn't actually physically show up for, whether it's sports or music or things that you might only experience in, in travel that can be that can be brought into a theater. Let's say in 4K, 60 frame per second, 3D, 15 foot Lamberts, you're there. It's just like you're there. You know, there's no reason to physically go someplace. And uh, you know, I think that we're gonna we're gonna trend that direction. I think you've got a lot of you've got a lot of empty seats in theaters on a Tuesday night, um, and I think that there are ways to to use the this this uh, platform as a kind of a uh, in, in a way that people haven't really fully embraced. It's starting to happen. You see it with you know. Opera, you know, the Met, and so on, live, live broadcast. HD is only a part of it. I think the 3D is the real, real game changer there. I wouldn't want to see it, you know, cannibalize the movie business, obviously, so I think there's a line to be walked there. Um, I'll just repeat myself. <laughs> uh, in terms of the fact that ultimately man is a social animal and women. Uh, and we want to be with each other want to enjoy things together and that is what the theatrical experience is it is a social experience that's what you bring to the, to the party and obviously any kind of experience that people want to enjoy together you now will have access to especially with 3d and and super high def and but it's you just have to think of it as a play it is as a meeting group a meeting place for people in a town um, I used to call the, the multiplex, the new uh, community center, the, the new place where people, the town comes to meet to enjoy things. And that is, I think, what, it's, what it ultimately is in a funny kind of way, but it will become even more so as the venue changes to include more, more social activity. And it's just, it's endless, whether it's, uh, you know, lectures or uh, entertainment, there's a whole bunch of things that can be done in a movie theater. And they haven't really taken a huge bite out of things yet, but they will. There's no question that as the process improves, digital improves, more and more of these kinds of programs will find their place in the local communities and people will be going to the local multiplex to do all kinds of cultural, social activities. So we're getting the wrap-up sign. Final question for the group. 